Mic check, one, two. Mic check, one, two. You already know what it is. Chauncey, a.k.a. You, Karima, great man of God media, back at you once again with another GMOG media TV conversation. All right, so this topic I want to talk about, this article that I just came across, and um, this is about Byron Allen and um, his lawsuit against Charter Communications, one of the biggest network television cable providers in the U.S. This brother is having his motion to sue for $10 billion to continue. I got to talk about that and address that family right there because that is fighting white supremacy one-on-one -on -one right there all right before i start my commentary and and also talk about the story once again if you're new my name is chauncey aka you karima great man of god media on this channel i talk about counter racism i also talk about issues that affect black people collectively as a group and i offer my suggestions on how to replace this broken system of injustice this broken system of racism, white supremacy with a system of justice. So if you subscribe to that ideology, please subscribe to this channel. If you don't, you are hate watching, pointless, click off, do something else. It's just that simple. All right. So uh, let's talk about this article. Let's bring it up on my screen. Um Article says Byron Allen invokes Civil Rights Act of 1866 in historic $10 billion suit against cable giant. And just to read something, just to read the article, um, a brief description about the article. Um, this week it says Byron Allen, chairman and CEO of Entertainment Studios and the National Association of African American Owned Media continued his epic ascent into legal stratosphere of black America's social engineering and provided a real-time case regarding the pursuit of justice for racism against minority business owners and entrepreneurs. In Monday's ruling by California Federal District Judge George H. Wu, Mr. Allen survived the motion to dismiss filed by Charter Communications within this balancing of the scales of justice. Charter Communications must respond to Allen's $10 billion lawsuit for racial discrimination in contracting against wholly minority-owned companies. Quote, we have evidence of racial bias harbored by top-level charter executives with decision-making authority and allege in detail the discriminatory treatment ESN suffered at the hands of these executives, said Skip Miller, attorney for Allen. All right. So that's basically the gist of the article, man. So, you know, this is historic. This is really big. This is historic. The motion, because Charter Communications, they got the lawsuit. And you know what white supremacy do? They say, okay, we got a lawsuit. Let's dismiss it. Just get, let's get this filed to dismiss and uh, wash our hands with it. Lo and behold, we got a judge who understands, appears to understand the cause of this, appears to understand racial discrimination and, and appears to understand uh, racism, white supremacy. And they said, no, we must move forward because this is injustice. This is the mistreatment of minority owned or black owned businesses, and they have to get our just due. So this judge, much kudos to that judge. And this is a continuance of going against fighting white supremacy and suppressing black owned businesses. So you see the, the fact that this lawsuit is $10 billion, right? This says a lot. This says a lot because, and they recently said in, in the article, you know, the cable industry, they make billions and billions and billions of dollars. Um, this says, quote, the cable, but Mr. Allen says, uh, the cable industry spends seventy billion a year licensing cable networks, and one hundred percent African-owned media receives zero. This is completely unacceptable. We will not until 
we will not stop until we, we achieve real economic inclusion for 100% African American owned media. All right, now sidetrack a little bit. People want to discredit Byron Allen because he's married to a white woman. The thing about it is, family, me personally, you know, as a black man, I prefer, you know, my African sisters. That's just me personally. But as far as collectively as a group, you can date who you want to date. You, you, you can date who you want to date. The whole thing is with me, as long as you understand the plight of African people in this country, as long as you understand how to move forward and our progressive ways to ascend African-American people collectively as a group, understanding the struggle that we have against the system of oppression, a.k.a. racism, white supremacy. As long as you understand the path of fighting racism, white supremacy and replacing it with the system of justice, meaning the progression of ascending black people collectively as a group, then I'm all for it. And Byron Allen appears to understand that methodology to make sure that black owned businesses, especially in the network television cable industry, they are included in this conversation when it comes to uh, having economic inclusion in the cable industry. And that's what he's trying to do. And I got to give him kudos for that. So regardless if he's dating a white lady, you know, uh, somebody that's basically non-black, as long as he understands the fight and the plight of our struggle, making sure that we are, we are included in the economic um, in the economic pie of the cable industry, then, like I said, I'm I'm all for what he's trying to do, regardless of who he's dating. It doesn't really matter, you know, because you have a lot of there's black people who've been married to a, a, a black woman and they're straight up coons. And you've seen it first in my previous videos when I talked about a guy named Polite, right? Who has multiple black wives, but he believes in all lives matter. Until I see Byron Allen talk about all lives matter, until I see Byron Allen say, what about black on black crime, right? And until I see Byron Allen bringing up these talking points of a suspected white supremacist or a coon, then this brother is thumbs up for me. In terms of, you know, black progress and understanding how to fight against racism, white supremacy, you know, he has my approval and he has my support. So I wish him nothing but the best. And I hope this man gets this money of uh, 10 billion dollars. You know, that's a lot of money. Uh, me personally, if one, once he gets the money or if he gets the money, um, I would like for him to actually not depend on the dominant white societies or the cable industry's infrastructure, meaning, you know, he's seeking to have his channel or his his network, rather, Entertainment Studios Network to be carried on Charter Communications um, and Comcast, right? He's already being carried on, um, his channels are being carried on AT&T U-verse as well as DirecTV, right? If, if he gets his $10 billion, I would like for him to build his own carrier infrastructure from the ground up where his own station, his own network uh, television station is on his own carrier network. That would be powerful. That would be powerful. And he could carry over other black owned um, network television studios, etc., on his carrier network. That would be incredible, in my opinion, you know, but again, like I said, this is exactly what you have to do to fight white supremacy, because as Alan just stated, they're spending 70 billion dollars on licensing, et cetera, et cetera, making multi billions of dollars and black owned television networks receive zero, zero money. You know, zero money. So that is the foundation of that. We're, we're not included. We're, we're not included at the seat of the table. We're not a part of the conversation when it comes to um, networks that represent black people. You know, like I said, I don't really watch a whole lot of 
television anyway. You know, the TV that I watch is sports related or comedy. You know, that's what I watch on TV, sports related or comedy. And um, I rarely watch any, you know, I don't watch uh, news besides TV one, news one now on, on TV one. That's what I watch. But uh, Byron Allen's network, uh, Entertainment Studios Network, I have not watched it because I don't have uh, DirecTV or uh, Uverse. You know, I have Comcast, and they don't carry his uh, his his um, TV network. They don't carry it. So if they did carry it, I'll be watching this channel, regardless of what 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 kind of content is on. I would watch it, but you know. Again, like I said, I wish his brother nothing but the best to get this money. I hope he gets the $10 billion, and I hope um, once he gets the $10 billion, he creates his own um, infrastructure uh, to carry other network television channels on his own platform. Create his own platform so that you know he can host black-owned network television stations, et cetera, et cetera. That's what I would like to see, you know, instead of depending on the dominant white society's resources, we have our own resources, right? Um, and then that's exactly what you have to do, again, to, to to fight against racism, white supremacy, to fight against discrimination, mistreatment, et cetera, et cetera, for Black-owned businesses. This is exactly what you have to do, and I commend them for that. I definitely commend them for that, family. All right? So uh, that's what I wanted to talk about, family. Leave your comments down below about this. Uh, let me know what you guys think about this lawsuit. Uh, once he gets the money, what do you think he should do with the money? Um, let me know down below what you guys think. All right, family. Chauncey, a.k.a. Ukarima, Great Manigal Media, signing out. Peace.